Howdy folks, welcome to another Tool Tech Tips video with PPCs. I'm Matt, and today we're going to check out the heat gun. Obviously, this is a pretty basic tool, but I figured it's best to sometimes start with the basics. So, this here is the Monsoon Pro Hardline heat gun that we sell at PPCs. There's quite a few different options, but today we're talking about specifically heat guns to heat up tubing and other large pieces of plastic. So this here's a great option, um, but be sure to browse the selection below where it is linked. Uh, for me, what I look for in a quality heat gun is it needs to stand up on its own, number one, for uh, heating up tubing. If it doesn't stand on its own, it's going to be pretty tough to deal with. I do like the dual heat, so you have uh, a high and a low here on the trigger. I find myself quite often using the low setting, but uh, it is there if you need it to pump up that a little bit. Now this heat gun actually has a dial back here that's missing the sticker. This is also for high and low heat adjustment. I typically never mess with this one and I don't know if it's that important. Now most will also come with this little diffuser cap here. It uh, directs or diffuses your flow of heat a little more uh, specifically. So that is a good little tool there. However, I typically don't use it. Um, a lot of times you'll lose it. So I get used to just heating up with the regular heat end. Now before it gets all loud in here from turning on the heat gun, I just want to go over some tips and tricks uh, about heating up tubing specifically. So first off, you got your inserts here. Uh, these two are both stated to be used for uh, 12 millimeter ID tubing. However, you can, you might even be able to see on the camera there, they're two clearly different sizes. Um, however, I find both work quite well. This one is still slightly loose, which is what I really look for in a good insert, is the ability to put it in without any lube or water or anything like that. Um, you do still sometimes need to use lube or water if you've got several uh, bends to do. That definitely helps. But uh, otherwise, even these very loose inserts still work well you're only trying to just keep the tubing from collapsing on itself. Enough on a different tool though. Back to the heat gun. When we're heating up our tubing, as I said, I don't use the little diffuser, so I typically hold it pretty close, within a couple inches of the heat tip there, and then obviously you gotta rotate it evenly around as you go. I also like to go back and forth. So the reason being for that is if you're trying to do a 90 like this and you just heat up this little spot here with the end of the gun, it isn't really the entire area that you're bending. So you'll quite often find that it'll stretch and this area will get thinner where you bent. It'll like stretch the tubing. So as I said, I kind of work the tubing back and forth. I like to heat up a good three, four inches usually. Um, it's really hard to heat up too much of the tubing so I definitely play with that a little bit. If you guys are getting some wonky bends, try heating up a little more of the tubing. And a little bit longer can't hurt. The thing is, is if you see bubbles and other things starting to form, the tubing gets hazy, then you have heated it too long. However, with most tubing, especially acrylic, it takes quite a bit of heat to get there. But as I said, just play with it at home and see what you end up with. So let's see this all in action. Now you can definitely tell it's all good and ready because it's loosely bending already. We appreciate everybody for checking out this series and watching today's video especially. If you guys missed last week's video, we checked out the barrel bending tool. So lots of bending stuff. Let us know in the comments below what you might want to see next week, because we definitely have more coming. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Happy water cooling.